Snowflake Dan here with you again. Today, we're gonna to be going over containerized native apps. As always, I'll have the link to the tutorial down below that we'll be using in the video. Let's get to it. So the first thing first we'll have to get into is the requirements. You have to be an enabled region for containers. You can't be on a trial and you need Docker desktop installed. Now, for this tutorial, it's a choose your own adventure. So we have two different options here. The first is a simple website. So you'll see here, it's just simple text on the website. The second one is a more fancy one. So if we go into that, you'll be able to see it's a bootstrap kind of website. You have ability to click around in it, click the builder, a uh, very kind of nicer version that a lot of people will use. So let's get into uh, downloading it first and foremost. So we'll download the files. The next we'll get into the setup. And for the setup, we'll take all of the code that's there. So we'll copy it over. Then we'll go into our Snowflake worksheets. The first one first is the SQL worksheet. We also have a Docker one that we'll use later. So we'll take that worksheet, we'll paste in the code, we'll select all of the code, then we'll click run. Now this will produce a URL that we can utilize in our in the steps in the future for Docker. So we'll copy that and we'll actually move it into our Docker worksheet for later on. Now, if we go back to the tutorial, we'll see we're gonna need to upload some native app files or the files that are used to build the native app. So we'll go to our uh, provider database that was just added and created. We'll go into the provider schema, then we'll go into the stage and then into the code stage. Here, we'll click add files. Then we'll open up that zip file that we just downloaded. We'll open up the folder called files. We'll go into the stage folder. This is what holds all of our files. And in here, we have a couple of files that will be used for the native app portion of our native app plus container services. So we'll go in there, click upload, and now you see all the files there. Perfect, let's move on with the tutorial. So the next step is the Docker step that we'll move into. This, again, you will need Docker desktop installed. Here, I'm showing that I have it installed and running in the background. Uh, the first thing we'll wanna go to is actually get into our folder called websites using the terminal. So I'll CD into my downloads folder because that's where the files folder is. I'll then see that there's a file folder in there, or files folder in there. We'll CD into there. You'll see now we have the website folder. So we'll finally CD into that folder and we'll see all the files that are gonna be used inside of our native app that's, or inside of our container that will run locally now. Perfect. So let's copy the code to run it locally. So we're in the in terminal, we'll paste it in there and we'll hit enter. Now what this will do is it'll build the application and give us a URL to go to. So we'll copy that URL, put it in our browser, and we'll be able to see what the website will look like locally on our computer before we add it into the native app. Perfect. So we have it there. We'll close out of it. We'll also shut down the locally running version of it. Now, what we'll want to do next is we'll clear out the terminal and we'll open up our browser again because we have to do some upload steps. So first and foremost in the upload is we're going to copy the Docker tag website. And then we'll go to our worksheet that I've labeled Docker. We'll paste that in there. And you'll notice here it says URL goes here. So we'll copy our URL that we got from our initial setup and we'll paste it in there. Then we'll go back to the tutorial. We'll copy the next step, which is going to be logging in. So with the login text, it says first part of the URL. Really what this means is it's gonna need the part that comes uh, be before the first forward slash. So we'll paste that in there and we'll also paste our username. In this, in this case, I'm using account admin, which, uh, which my user has access to, which is my own email. 
and we'll add it there. The next part is the final step, which is Docker push. So we'll paste that in there as well. And then we'll copy our URL one more time. Perfect. So we have that all perfectly set up in our worksheet. We'll go back and expand and we'll go back to terminal and we're going to paste these in one step at a time. First with the tag, next with the Docker login, which will require me to enter in a password or my username's password. Once it's in there, you'll see it'll say a login successful. And then finally, we'll push that Docker container. Now, this might take a little bit of time, but through the magic of uh, YouTube videos, I've kind of sped up this process. And we'll see very quickly the upload happened. So finally, we've uploaded our Docker. We've completed the Docker step. So we'll expand our browser again. We'll go into the build application step. So we'll finally start to get to build our native app with the Docker container. We'll go back to our SQL worksheet. We'll remove what's in there just to keep it simple. And the first step, what we're gonna wanna do is create the application package. So this is the package that we're gonna turn into an actual app. But first, we'll have to copy over our Docker container database known as provider database into our package. So then when we create the application itself, it will have the Docker container in it. Perfect. So now we'll create the actual application. We'll call it consumer app. And if we go back into our databases, you'll see we have the package, the database, and now this consumer app. So if we click on that, we'll click open app. This will launch the application itself and really the installation process. And so the first thing we want to do is grant a couple of privileges, one to create a compute pool, the next to bind a service endpoint, so a URL to log into, and we'll create a warehouse. So you'll see here I've clicked grant. You'll see I've granted these privileges to the application itself. And finally, we'll click activate. Now this will institute the installation of it. This will take a few minutes to do. Sometimes you might have to hit refresh, but through the magic of YouTube, we've got it completely installed in seconds. So we could see the compute pool about the app, but more importantly, let's launch the app. Uh, once we're launched, we'll have to log in. And once we're logged in, we'll see that now we've deployed the application. We can click around in it and we could change it to dark mode. You'll see now though, the main thing is, is that at the top URL, you'll notice that it's a Snowflake URL. So we've successfully uh, built our container and deployed it into native apps. Now this has been Snowflake Dan, thank you for watching.